One of the first videos I created is all about three foundational concepts that I think are important to understand when we start working with Tableau. And these are the concepts of dimensions versus measures, rows versus columns, and blue versus green. More than a year after posting that video, I would like to revisit, review, and provide additional perspectives on these concepts. If you are interested to check out the original video, as I will not be repeating everything from that video, I will provide a link in the card above and description down below. I'll see you in a bit. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. I shared in my previous community post that I have been trying to up my drawing game. It's my newfound hobby that de-stresses and reinvigorates me. However, I'm not great at it. This was one of my first tries. I'm not sure what you're seeing, but I was trying to draw cats. And I'm pretty sure most of these don't look like cats. They look more like dumplings. And now that makes me hungry. Well, since that time, I watched a few drawing classes and tried again. I think I'm pretty happy with some of the improvement. I didn't try cats this time, but ambitious that I was, I tried to draw The Mandalorian, one of my favorite shows. I have a long way to go. I can see myself watching quite a few more videos on drawing and character design. If you are in the same boat and wanting to learn drawing, illustration, even photography, web design, or even doodle art, try Skillshare. Many of the lessons are under an hour, and one hour could be all it takes to elevate your drawing. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. I think understanding these three foundational concepts will make us more effective when we are working with Tableau. This can help minimize our errors and us second-guessing why Tableau doesn't do what we want it to do. I do want to start by dividing these three concepts into two groups up front. The first group is all about the data role, and this is where dimensions and measures are grouped under. The other two concepts fall under the second group, which is about display. Rows and columns, as well as blue and green, really pertain to display and formatting. It doesn't have anything to do with the role of the data. Let's start off with number one, dimensions and measures. This pertains to the data role. What is the data about? What does it represent? A measure is a quantitative or numerical value that we often care about and analyze in our organizations or businesses. It could be the number of units, or sales, or profit, or profit margin. A dimension is a categorical value that helps describe a lot of these numbers. It provides context to the numbers. For example, $100, that's a number. That is considered a measure, but we don't know what that means. The dimension helps us explain what $100 is, and in some cases helps slice and dice the $100 to the different groups that it belongs to. In Tableau, after we connect to our data source, all of the fields will be automatically categorized as either dimensions or measures. You can find all these fields in the sidebar. In a previous version of Tableau, you're going to see dimensions, and measures clearly labeled in the sidebar. However, in the new versions of Tableau that use relationships and the relationship data model, which is version 2020.2 onwards, this was replaced with a single faint gray line. Anything above the line will be dimensions and anything below the line will be measures. Numeric values from your data source are automatically categorized as measures unless the field name has ID in it. For example, in this case, we can see row ID, which is clearly numeric data. However, it sits above the line, and this is because of the field name. If that initial categorization is incorrect, for example, if row ID was really meant to be a measure, we can make the correction. We can either drag that field onto measures, and as we cross that gray line, we can see the name's dimensions and measures. We can correct the data this way, or let's undo this first. We could also right-click on this field and convert this to a measure. Tableau also indicates this role when you right-click on any of the fields and describe it. For example, for row ID, you're going to see that the role is this is a discrete dimension. Measures are also automatically aggregated, 
What that means is when we use these fields, for example, sales, when I drag this over, what's going to be used in the canvas is not sales. Notice that in this pill, it actually says sum of sales and sum is an aggregation function. It means that we are collecting a number of records to generate some kind of total or subtotal. And to visualize this, we can take a look at the underlying data. So for example, in here, if you click this, we can view the underlying data and under the full data, we can see that this one number also indicated in the number of marks, this was generated from 9,994 rows. So measures are automatically aggregated. If we have a need to disaggregate measures, we can also do that. So under analysis, we can uncheck this aggregate measures. And what this is going to give us is each individual number. So you can see in the number of marks, there's actually 9,994 marks. Let's undo this. So this is the number, 2.29 million. But we have no idea what this means. So there is no context. It's just a grand total number. If we wanted to get further context, we can start combining this with our dimensions. For example, if I bring over category, this is a dimension that will help slice up our data. So now we know which of those 2.297 million actually goes to furniture, which one goes to office supplies, and which one goes to technology. Dimensions are categorical and they provide context. What's important to note is we can convert some of these dimensions to measures. And typically what that requires is aggregating these dimension values. For example, let's take a look at customer name. We could technically convert this to a measure, but what that means is we're going to lose each individual value. So let's describe this first. These are all of our customers. There's 793 of them. If we decide to convert this to a measure, so on the drop down, convert to measure, it is going to be transformed into account distinct. And the moment we drag this over, this is not giving us the individual customer names anymore, but it's telling us the number of customers who purchased from each of these categories. Also note that while our default aggregation is sum, we can change this if we need to. For example, here for sum of sales, when we click on that pill on the drop down, there is an option for measure, and this allows us to select the type of aggregation we need. So we can change this to a sum, an average, a median, a count, count distinct, and we have additional other options. So these are our aggregations. If we want to change the default aggregation of something, we can also do that from the sidebar. For example, discount, by default, when we drag this over, it's going to give us a sum of discount. However, we shouldn't really be adding a lot of the discount. So a 10% discount somewhere and a 90% discount somewhere else is not 100%. So it makes more sense for us to change this default aggregation. So let's remove that. And for discount, we can click on the drop down. Under default properties, we can change the aggregation and perhaps we want to use an average. So the next time we drag this over from the sidebar, let's drag this over. What we're now seeing is not sum, but average. Sometimes dimensions and measures are not very clear cut. There are certain data points that we could definitely use as a measure. We want to aggregate that. We want to slice and dice that. But in other cases, we might want to use the same field as a slicer or a descriptor for the rest of our data. A good example in here is quantity. So let's take a look at quantity. So on the drop down, let's describe this. Right now, this is a continuous measure. Let's load the values. And this is telling us that the quantity is a value from 1 to 14. Let's close this. Let's create just one more worksheet. Let's bring over category. And for example, we just want to know the overall quantity. So in this case, we can see the overall quantity that was purchased from each of these categories. However, quantity can also be a descriptor. Let's duplicate this field first. And let's move this copy over to dimension. Let's clear this worksheet. And a possible use case is we want to know the profit depending on the quantity that was sold. So in here, let's drag quantity over and we are treating this now as a dimension and our dimensions provide context, their categorical values, they help describe the data. And we can see in here, we have quantities one all the way to 14. And if we wanted to know the profit, profit is a measure. When we drag this over by default, this is going to be aggregated. So it's not going to land as just profit. It's going to land as sum of profit by default. And again, in here, we can see a little bit of distribution if this is what we wanted to do. And at this point, quantity, while it's the same field, can be used in two different contexts. In some cases, we just want to add this up and perform some aggregations, maybe a minimum, a maximum, an average. Or in some cases, we want this to be the actual slicers of our data. We want to see our numbers in the context of quantity.
Let's now move on to the second concept, which is rows versus columns. Specifically, what is the difference when you place pills or fields on the row shelf versus the column shelf? Before we continue, it's best to describe what these shelves do first. Whatever fields we place in the rows or column shelves are going to be drawn on the canvas. These drawings are also called marks, and if we wanted to change the properties of those marks, then we go to the marks card. The number of marks drawn on screen will also be indicated in the status bar. So for example, let's take a look at category. Let's click on the drop down. Let's click on describe. This is a dimension and it has three values. And what this means is when we drop this to either the columns or the row shelves, these three values are going to appear in our canvas. The rows and the column shelves though indicate the orientation. How are we going to display these values? Take a look at these visual cues and pay attention to the orientation of the small squares. For example, for columns, the small squares are laid out horizontally. For rows, all of these small squares are laid out vertically. And that is the orientation we can expect for the fields that we drop onto these shelves. Anything in columns will be horizontally laid out. Anything in rows will be vertically laid out. And this is independent of the type of data. When we place dimension on columns, all of those values for the dimension are going to be horizontally laid out. When we place a measure on rows, the aggregated value of that measure is going to be vertically laid out. So for example, category, when we drop that to columns, what we can expect is all the values are going to be placed side by side. And this is what we get. If we move this to rows, it's going to be the same three values, but this time it is vertically laid out all of the values are stacked on top of each other. Let's remove this. If we take a measure and drop that to columns, remember that with measures, they are automatically aggregated. So when we drag sales over, it's going to be the sum of sales by default. When we place this on columns, this aggregated value is going to be horizontally drawn on screen. And this is what we get. If we move sales to rows, it's going to change the orientation. It is now going to be vertical. So if we wanted a series of vertical bars subdivided, for example, by category, as well as year of order date, then this is what we're going to get. Tableau also by default changes the marks based on the combination of fields that are on your shelves. So in this case, because we do have a time component, it automatically changes this to a line chart, but we can always override this. So in this case, we can click on the drop down for the marks and then change it back to a bar. Now looking at this a little bit more closely, category, the three values are horizontally laid out. They are side by side here. Now the placement of these fields also matter. In this case, year follows category, which means category is going to be subdivided by year. And in here you have category subdivided by year, but you can still see the values of year horizontally laid out. If we change the placement, for example, moving year to the left of category, then year, which appears right here, is now subdivided by each individual category. And note that the category values, they are still horizontally laid out. Should we move some of the fields around, for example, move year to rows, then again, in here we can expect that because this is in rows, all the values are going to be vertically stacked or stacked on top of each other. And that's what we're seeing. You have 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. It is vertically laid out. The third concept is all about blue versus green. Blue fields or blue pills in Tableau are what we consider as discrete fields. And discrete fields pertain to individual, independent, distinct values. Green fields or green pills are what we consider continuous fields. And continuous fields pertain to a range of values. And the big difference between these two is still about the display. Setting a field as either blue or green influences how we display the data. Blue fields generate headers. And green fields, they generate axis. And when we say axis, it is going to be a range of values. Blue and green fields are also independent of the data role. A dimension, it can be blue or green. Meaning we can display a dimension as either headers or axis. Measures are the same way. We can choose to display our measures as either headers or axis. Let's take a look at this in Tableau. Remember earlier that we duplicated quantity. So let's work with this when we are describing blue versus green pills. 
So you have quantity as a measure and quantity as a dimension. By default, measures are green, they are continuous, they are going to generate an axis or a range of values, and by default, dimensions are blue, which means they're going to generate headers. Let us start with a continuous measure. If I simply drag quantity right now, this is considered a measure, it sits underneath this line, it is a measure, so by default, this is going to be aggregated, and the default aggregation is sum. So when I drag this over, what I'm going to see is an aggregation. What's going to be placed on the screen is the sum of quantity. When we place this on rows, what we're going to get is a vertical axis. This is your Y axis. If we move this to columns, we are still going to get an axis, but this time we are getting an X axis or a horizontal axis. When we right click on this, we are going to see an indication that indeed what we are generating is an axis. So you do have an option here to edit the axis. Now we can choose to display this differently. We can choose to display this not as an axis, but as a header. We can choose to do it just for this current worksheet, this current display. So for example, in here, we click on the drop down on the field that's already on the shelf and then change this to discrete. The display changes, but it doesn't change the fact that this is still a measure that is aggregated. So moving this to rows just changes that orientation. Let's remove this field. If we wanted this to be the default display, we can also go to our sidebar click on that field, and then change this to discrete. Again, this doesn't change the fact that this is still a measure. When we drag this over, the behavior of measures is it's going to be aggregated by default. And what you're seeing right now is when I drop this anywhere in my screen, it is still the sum of quantity. It just gets displayed differently. Let's clear our worksheet. Now, how about the other quantity, the one that we dragged onto the dimensions area? Let's click on the drop down and describe this. Right now, this is being considered as a dimension. It is a discrete dimension, which means it's going to generate headers. And it's going to be headers for each of these individual 14 values. So let's take a look at this. When we drag this over onto columns, we expect the 14 values to be laid out side by side. It's going to be horizontally laid out. And that's what we're seeing. Now, it's important to note, these are headers. This is not an axis. When we right click on any of these headers, we're not going to get the option edit axis because this is not an axis. When we move quantity to rows, it's still going to be these 14 individual values, but it's just going to be laid out differently. It's going to be vertically laid out, meaning all these values are going to be stacked one on top of each other. Let's try that. And that's what we get. Let's clear our worksheet. Now, should we want to change the display of these values, still 14 values, but maybe we want them as an axis or as a number line, we can do that. We can convert this dimension into a continuous field. So on the drop down, we can change this to continuous. However, this is still not aggregated. It's not being considered as a measure. It's not the sum of quantity. It's still the individual 14 values of quantity, and the only difference is we are displaying this as an axis. If we move this to columns, same thing, we're still going to get 14 values, but we are just using an axis this time. Should we want the default display of this particular field to be an axis, then we can go to our sidebar, and from here, we can convert this to continuous. This is still going to be a dimension, it's not going to be aggregated by default, but it's going to generate an axis by default every time we drag it. Blue and green pills, they don't affect just the display. Blue and green fields also affect other properties and controls. So for example, let's build a very simple bar chart. Let's put some category on rows. Let's say sales on columns. If we put a blue pill onto color, then what we can expect is each individual value will give us a different distinct independent color. So if we drag segment over, for example, in here, each distinct value corresponds to a distinct color, and it's going to help us produce a stacked bar chart. Let's remove this. If, for example, we drag a continuous field onto color, then what we can expect is still a range of values. Right now, what we are seeing is a range of colors. In a way, this is very similar to an axis of colors. Let's generate one more example. So another worksheet. And this time, let's use our quantity, which we are considering as a dimension. I'm going to drag that over to our columns. All the individual values are laid out horizontally. All the values are side by side. 
And let's say for each quantity, we want to count the number of customers. So we can right click drag our customer ID, select count distinct customer ID. And what we get is something very similar to a histogram. Now, in this case, should we want to add a filter? So on the drop down of quantity, which is currently a discrete dimension. So click on the drop down, show filter. What we are going to get is each individual value. Again, this is very similar to having a header of values. All the distinct values are laid out or listed here. However, we may want to display this as a range of values. So even though we are still considering this as a dimension, just for the filter, we want to display this as an axis or as a range of values to make it a little bit more user friendly. And in this case, we can do that. We can simply change our filter to something that is continuous. It doesn't affect the fact that we are still considering this as a dimension. So on the drop down on the field on filter, we can change only this one to continuous. We can select a range, let's say one to five and click OK. And when we display this now, let's show the filter for quantity. Now, this is no longer each individual value. What we are getting is a range of values. Again, it's very similar to having an axis of values. So this is pretty much the review that I wanted to do. I think these are the three foundational concepts and the cornerstones of working with Tableau. First one is dimensions versus measures, knowing what the role of the data is. What does the data represent? Second is rows versus columns, which is really the orientation of what we're drawing on screen, whether it's horizontal or vertical. And the third one, blue or green or discrete or continuous, that allows us to display something as either a header or an axis. Again, there are additional concepts that I've covered in the original video, if that is something that might be useful for you. If you are new to Tableau, I hope this was a helpful video in understanding how to work with Tableau. If you've been using Tableau for a while, I hope this was a worthwhile refresher. I hope you were still able to pick up some new information. Thank you so much for your time, and I will see you again next time.